Good morning. So we're on our way to a UK car boot sale. So if you're in the US, this is where people bring all of the items that they would have typically had at a garage sale and they set up a table in a field and they sell it off of that. So, or out of their trunk, I guess too, since the trunk is a boot. I have been told that it is a not to miss type of event for someone who loves to thrift. So I'm hoping we're getting there early enough. I just could not bring myself to wake up at 5.30. So we're gonna get there around 7.30 and hopefully that means there's still goodies to find. But yeah, excited to, to experience it and see what I get. We arrived and I just thought you guys would find it funny that it's 80p to get in. So that's roughly like 80 cents. So, um, yeah, you wouldn't see admission prices like that in the States. Okay. So we're in and very eclectic selection. So there's like food and flowers and like knockoffs and like dropped merchandise and very, very wild selection. So I finally made a purchase. It's this little ceramic dude. I have no idea what it is. It kind of almost looks like it's Tonala to me, but it doesn't have a marking on it. But um, it's 50 cents or 50p. Uh, but yeah, I think it's kind of fun. to breakfast because we're hungry so sorry if it's bumpy it is like <laughs> the roads oh my gosh the roads so many curves anyways uh that was an adventure oh my goodness i definitely um took the best footage for you guys because there was a lot of like fakes like fake goods a lot of like toiletry vendors um like selling like shampoos and deodorants um there was a lot of um yeah just all sorts of random stuff probably a lot of stolen stuff too um but um but yeah it's definitely worth going to because i did find some things um for really good prices i when i was going in and paying the change for the entrance fee i asked the person to break a 10 um to give me some pounds and some smaller like 50p coins 50 cent coins and um, luckily they agreed. I think they were just like, what is a weird American? Um, and so I got some change, which was great because I think I probably only spent maybe 10 pounds, um, like total. So, um, so that's really good. So luckily, I, and all of it was like three pounds or less and some stuff was like 50 cents. So I'm glad I got that change. Otherwise I'd be having to ask them to like, can you break a 20? That would not have gone well. So yeah, can't wait to show you guys what I got. So as you can tell, I'm back in my studio, back home from my sourcing trip in Europe, and today I'm gonna share the haul 
from the car boot sale that I went to. So the footage that you just watched. So I wanted to like talk about car boot sales for just a second because I know a lot of people are like not familiar with car boot sales, especially if you're in the States. Um, like why do they exist? You know, what are they all about? What was the pricing like? So I wanna like touch on that first. Okay, so the reason why people will go to a field and set up all their stuff to sell is because most of the people in the UK don't live in detached housing. So like, you know, in the States here in the US, most of us have a standalone house that we live in. Um, and in Europe, that's not typically the case. A lot of people live, you know, in apartments and flats and attached housing. And because of that, they don't have the driveways, the garages, or the front yards that are required to do like our version of garage sales. So car boot sales are essentially like the UK's version of garage sale. And the pricing is very, very similar, which is awesome sometimes even cheaper so that part was amazing so the pieces that i picked up are i love them they're very small and that's because the cars in the uk are smaller than cars in the us and most people don't have trucks and so they don't have a lot of room in their tiny little cars to bring huge furniture pieces like we would typically get like a garage sale or what we do here which is like you know you could get big items so all the stuff that i got was small and compact because most of the stuff on the blankets that I was shopping was definitely small and compact. Okay, so now that you have a sense for what car boot sales are about and the pricing, um, I'm gonna jump right into all the pieces that I got. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is this beautiful original seascape painting. Yes, it's an original painting. I got it for three pounds, which is crazy. So that was amazing score. It's definitely really old. Um, it's signed here in the corner. So yeah, I thought that was really great. I cannot believe, I still cannot believe when I asked like, cause a lot of stuff is not priced. And so I was like, well, how much is this? And she was like three pounds. I was like, oh, like I thought, wow, that is amazing. So this definitely came home with me and this will be available for sale. Okay. So the next piece I have to show you was an even better deal than the three pounds, if you can believe it. So this was only 50 cents. <laughs> If you can believe it. So it is a lovely needlepoint of a thatched roof cottage. It's so, so cute. Probably from the Cotswolds. I mean, look at the colors. It's in really, really good shape. It's already framed. Um, yeah, largely doesn't really have any stains on it. Just a little bit of like um, grain from the fact that it is so old. I could not believe that she said 50 cents. So it was really funny actually. So it was on like this blanket and I said, oh, well, how much is that? And she, she goes, a pound, 50 cents. And so like she second guessed herself and I was like, I was already ready at a pound, but it was only 50 cents. So I was like, woohoo. So yes, yeah, so that was like a really, really, really good deal. So at this point in the day, I just like, I'm at like three pounds, 50 cents for two amazing pieces of wall art. So yeah, that was like, that made going to the car boot sale like already worth it in of itself just for these two pieces. Most of the stuff was like displayed on tables. A few people had like bins to kind of sort through, which is sometimes my favorite because usually that means they're gonna give you a good deal. So um, in one of the sets of bins, I found this very cool um, mosaic tray. Now I love these, they're very mid-century. They used to be used as ashtrays. I've actually cleaned this guy up. It was very, very black in the middle. It still has a little bit of patina from the um, cigarettes back in the day. Um, but yeah, I just, I have never seen one that has just the green. Usually the tones are very much like the mid-century tones that I don't particularly love, which are like the oranges and the more like pea green, chartreuse colors. Um, so I just loved how this was more hunter green um, and more like a sage green here. So I thought that was really pretty. So this will be available for sale. Um, I just thought it was so cute. And then I also got a set. Now I'm just showing you two of them because actually I've already washed them and we're using them. We're eating off of them. So the rest are downstairs in my um, silverware drawer, but I love these soup spoons. I mean, if you're not eating soup with these then you're not doing it right because you, they are so much easier to scoop all of the delicious goodies out of the broth. So anytime I see these, I tend to pick them up because they're so handy. You cannot have enough. And I just love the fact that they were pink and had this floral pattern on it. Usually they're plain or they're in blue. So the fact that they had pink, I thought was just really, really pretty. So there was a set of six. So I had to grab them and I got this. So this was inside um, a bin. And so yeah, I was really excited to kind of hunt through that and find these gems in it. Okay. So everything in this haul is pretty mini. You're going to be like, is everything is small, Andy? And like I said earlier, 
most of the stuff that I picked up was small because most of the things displayed are not super big. So, uh, but that being said, this may be one of the smallest little pots I've ever thrifted in my life. So I thought this guy was so, so cute. I loved the colors. It is stamped on the bottom. It's definitely like a mid-century piece. But yeah, I fell in love with it. At the same booth, I also found this very cool wooden box as well, which this is like an amazing catch-all for, um, you know, little goodies and stuff. So a little nice little stash box. It's like this beautiful, like, teak like color in really good shape, really no flaw. So I just love sculptural boxes like this. So both of these together, I was like, oh, yes, please. I would like these. Um, and this, I love the, the little nubbin thing on the top, but this on the back actually says where it, what does, where it was designed. So it was designed in Warwick, which is a town in the UK. Actually, Warwick has the most amazing intact castle, just as a FYI. So if you ever go to Europe and you want to see an extremely well-preserved castle go to warwick castle um in the midlands and you will not be disappointed so it was kind of exciting to know that this was like done in warwick because it's a very cool place and i actually had gone there recently prior to this to show my son like his first castle and he's like oh my god you know there's princesses here and I'm like there are princesses there i guess well there used to be uh but anyway so yeah this guy and this guy so this will probably not be available but this probably will be available so that's the problem. Oh, I just want to keep stuff. So most of the things I've shown you will be available for sale, but this piece, I just let, you know, I love a mini. So this will most likely be for me and my little like miniature pottery collection. So something kind of funky I picked up is this like cat head. Now it kind of reminded me of the pieces that I, I see like that are tonala. So from in Mexico, although I will say it, it probably isn't. That's one thing that when I went over to Europe and I was in the shops, like usually in the States, you see a lot of pieces that people are picking up from um, Mexico because, you know, Americans go down to Mexico and, and bring souvenirs back. Well, not many like Europeans are coming to Mexico and bringing souvenirs back. So that's definitely reflective in their stuff. So I thought this was kind of, I asked the people, I'm like, is this from Mexico? Is this like Tonala? And they're like, we have no idea. My mom just had it and it's junk, so we're getting rid of it. So I was like, oh, well. It's for me now. So I thought this was very cool and sculptural. Um, I think it's just like a really fun thing to have styled in a vignette because it's just so eye-catching and just so quirky. And you know me, I love anything quirky. So so yes, yeah, so this piece um, will be available, but oh, it's just so weird and interesting. I, I'm really tempted to keep it, which is basically like everything I have found on this trip, but I'm trying to be really good at making things available for you guys. Okay, so we're going to end the, the haul with some brass pieces because I'm always picking up brass. Although I will say, oh, looking back at the footage, I'm so mad that I did not buy this brass fox. I had never come across one before. It was only seven pounds, so it was like so cheap. But the problem was it weighed a ton. And I knew because I was taking the items back in checked bags versus shipping, that I was limited to, you know, obviously there was weight limits to how much you could stuff in each suitcase that I brought back with me. So I was like, ooh, do I wanna sacrifice all that space, you know, all that weight for just one item? And the answer should have been yes, because it could have my in-laws who live there bring it back when they come over next. So anyways, the moral of the story is just buy the stuff and figure it out. <laughs> because don't leave, don't leave anything behind if you can, especially if you're not sourcing in Europe all the time like I wasn't. So anyways, that was me telling you, again, if you watch my channel, you know I go on these rants probably every few videos where I like have deep regrets not buying anything. So anyways, we'll get to the brass that I did pick up, which are these beautiful um, brass candle holders. They're very interesting. They're made in China. Um, I just fell in love with them. Also, just FYI, the brass I'm showing you now and next, um, I've already pre-shined up. I'm going to a market soon. And so I did a, like a massive brass cleaning day. And so everything that I have brass in my studio got to shine up. So these did too. So they did not come like this. So anyways, yeah, I shine them up. They're beautiful. They have all this amazing etched detail. I mean, and then also very pokey. So very cool. Uh, but yeah, so there's like all sorts of ways you can like display them together because they kind of like nest a little bit there or you can do you know basically whatever you want. But I thought they were very cool very sculptural pieces and they will be available for sale. I'm not gonna keep them, which is killing me because I love them, but 
um, I'm gonna make available for you guys. These are the cutest thing I think I've ever picked up in brass. And that's saying something because I find a lot of really cute stuff in brass is this mushroom brass piece. And it has a teeny tiny frog on top sitting. Is that not the cutest thing you have ever seen? I mean, look at this little mushroom here. I literally lost my mind. I've never found a brass mushroom ever. So when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, it is, you are coming home with me. This is amazing. So yeah, I had to pick this up. The first things that I found in that, in that person's like stash of stuff was these. And then I saw this and I like lost my mind. And then the next thing I got, because I thought, you know, I'll just buy a couple brass things and get like better pricing, was I did get this beautiful leaf which is kind of nice little trinket tray. So this is great for jewelry. Like if you have a, like a delicate necklace or rings, it's a great way to corral them uh, and not lose them and keep them safe. So I always pick up little trinket dishes like this because they're just so, so versatile. And I love the fact that it was a leaf and I think it probably was an ashtray because it was very dirty. So many of these things actually were ashtrays rather than trinket dishes back in the day. Uh, but yeah, these will all these pieces will be available to you guys because I just have so much stuff and I got so many amazing things. Oh, during this, this sourcing trip that I can't keep it all. I keep telling myself, Andy, you can't keep it all. So yeah, even this is going to be available. So I feel like this is gonna be one of those hot items from all the hauls that I got. The other hot items, if you haven't watched my very first video, I showcase some mini breast candle stick holders, which are always like the favorite of everybody. And every time I sell them, they just fly right out as soon as I list them. So anyways, I mean, there's gonna be a few things that I'm gonna drop together as something exciting to build up a little bit of excitement because I know it's just like pieces that people aren't typically seeing. And so this will be available with that drop of stuff that I know is just gonna get swooped up really, really quick. Okay, so that's all I have to show you. So thank you for watching my teeny tiny haul. So this is like one of many videos. So I split all the footage from my sourcing trip to Europe where I spent like three and a half weeks in Europe. So I did the UK, which I was there mostly. And then I also was um, in Paris for a weekend and did all those flea markets. So all the videos are kind of split up and they have each have their own hauls. So um, definitely make sure that you check out all of the other videos in the series, which I will definitely remember to link down in the description box. So if this is the first one you're watching, make sure you go and watch the other ones. And one thing before I go, I want to talk a little bit about how I got all this stuff home because I know you're probably thinking like, Andy, how, how did you ship it? And the answer is no, I did not. I told you a little bit earlier that I was packing in the suitcases and that's how I got every single item home. I actually packed it in check bags because checking a bag with all your stuff is way cheaper than shipping something through the postal service, like wildly cheaper. And on top of that fast, assuming your luggage doesn't go missing, which I know is always a risk, but assuming it doesn't go missing, obviously your stuff is coming home with you the same time you're traveling versus waiting weeks for a box to show up. I mean, I have literally waited, I've had stuff that I have shipped to Europe and abroad that has taken three months to arrive with the postal service. That it just because of like customs and checkpoints, it's just a nightmare. So if you decide to go to Europe or anywhere and you're sourcing, the most economical way to get your stuff home is typically by packing it in a suitcase and shipping it, shipping it, meaning packing it and putting it under the plane as another check to carry on bag. Usually airlines will allow you to have like sometimes up to six check bags. Like the first are like a cheaper price and then like the final bags are more expensive. So with British Airways for us, it was like each bag was like 90, each additional check bag was $90, but you got up to 50 pounds, which was amazing. So $90 spread out, you know, with all this stuff made shipping it back so much more affordable because a small package can cost you $90. So just as a FYI, that's how I got everything home and everything came and nothing was broken. Everything came home perfect. So I'm gonna be giving you a tutorial um, later down the road on how I got all this stuff home, how I packed it all. And also my hacks and tips for getting things on the plane and not paying for check bags. So I have a lot of stuff to share with you soon. Okay, so that's all I have to show you and share with you today. Thank you so much for watching. You know, let me know in the comments what items from my tiny little haul um, were your favorite. And then if you're from the UK, I wanna know what car boot sales are like for you and what your like best score was because I'm like hooked on them now. Like anytime I go over, I'm gonna go to a car boot sale because the prices were just way, way too good.
If you're looking for more thrifting and decorating content between all my haul videos here on YouTube, make sure you check me out on YouTube and TikTok. Thanks again for watching, and I can't wait to see you in my next thrifting and decorating video. Take care!